Hello, and welcome to another uh, Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and uh, again, today's uh, uh, slides are courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, the joint service of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. We're going to continue today <clears throat> our uh, journey into ovarian pathology. Uh, this is the case of a 70-year-old woman who presents with an ovarian mass uh, and disseminated disease uh, in stage four. Uh, in fact, her uh, tumor is manifest first with uh, GI bleeding, uh, leading to uh, endoscopy uh, of the lower tract. Here we can see several biopsies. This looks like colonic mucosa, uh, fairly normal, a very abnormal fragment, and a sort of in-between fragment. Uh, looking first at... Uh, this uh, abnormal fragment here, we can jump uh, fairly quickly and see that this is an adenocarcinoma. There's areas of ulceration and ulcer debris. And looking in it more closely at these cells, we note that they have quite a striking, clear, slightly granular cytoplasm with uh, fairly pleomorphic nuclei, uh, some nucleoli and so forth. It's not a typical pattern of GI cancers. It's a much more clear, uh, pale uh, pattern of uh, malignant cells. And so uh, thinking about possible tumors that have a clear cell morphology would be natural. Here's uh, another area. We can again see these uh, clear uh, cells. And you can begin to see sometimes the nuclei tend to sort of move up towards the apex of the uh, cytoplasm here, uh, a little bit more pleomorphism and this apical uh, location of the nuclei, which is uh, characteristic of uh, ovarian and uh, endometrial uh, clear cell tumors. Uh, moving on to the ovary, uh, here we have a section of ovarian tumor and here another section that looks uh, virtually entirely necrotic. We'll focus here on this section and we see that there's sort of a mixed cystic uh, pattern with some uh, red tinged fluid, uh, some papillary structures here, uh, some microcystic uh, areas. Uh, as well. Uh, and looking here into this uh, uh, well-preserved area, we see these cells have a small microglandular pattern. And again, we see this uh, uh, apical location of some of the nuclei. Also of note uh, in this uh, particular case is the presence of this uh, hyaline sclerosis of the uh, area around the uh, tumor. We see this uh, uh, ple nuclear pleomorphism, and again, the, the clear cytoplasm. Uh, looking to a few other areas, we can see, again, uh, this uh, uh, apical location of some of the nuclei, uh, which has been uh, termed a hobnail uh, cell appearance. This is a great example right here of this uh, bulbous uh, nucleus uh, with just the smallest attenuated uh, attachment to the underlying stroma. The hyaline material in the uh, stroma is also very characteristic of this neoplasm uh, along with this morphology. Now, spread of the tumor into other locations, such as here to the fallopian tube, uh, may produce a slightly different pattern. Here we see a, a solid pattern uh, with uh, sheets of cells, some areas of necrosis, and, and this variable clear to pale eosinophilic cytoplasm. Again, nuclear pleomorphism is fairly uh, uh, remarkable. Here's a quite large nucleus, another one, and then some smaller, uh, less uh, remarkable ones. Here's another section of the same fallopian tube, and we see tumor actually within the lumen. Uh, this may represent spread from an endometrial source or a downward spread from the ovary. Um, here again, you can see geographic areas of clear cell change areas of necrosis, and uh, a nearly solid tumor cell pattern. Uh, one of the striking things in this solid pattern is the very pronounced uh, nuclear membranes or cell borders between cells, uh, as you can see here. So this is a nice example, a nice uh, foray of several different uh, sections showing a clear cell carcinoma. Uh, in this case, arising in the ovary, though these tumors can also occur, such as I've mentioned, in the endometrium, 
occasionally in the cervix. Clear cell carcinoma of the ovary has uh, characteristically either solid, cystic, and papillary patterns. And this stromal hyaline change is quite remarkable. The cells tend to be polygonal with clear cytoplasm, maybe granular eosinophilic cytoplasm, and this hobnail configuration. And in case you haven't seen what a hobnail looks like, this is a nice little example of this apical enlargement, bulbous enlargement with a underlying uh, pointed end uh, that in the case of the tumors would be the point attachment to the underlying stroma. The nuclei tend to be fairly high grade with moderate pleomorphism. And as is uh, mentioned, they may be combined with other morphologies, most commonly with uh, endometrioid type uh, tumors. Immunohistochemically, these are uh, PAX8 positive uh, cells and uh, very helpful, they are uh, NAPSIN A positive. Uh, no other ovarian tumors uh, mark with this uh, NAPSIN A marker. Uh, usually they're hormone receptor negative, WT1 receptor negative, and P53 expression can be variable. Uh, most are not mutated, uh, but some uh, occasionally will show that. And it is important for the differential, uh, CD10 is negative uh, to make sure that uh, you don't, we aren't dealing with a uh, clear cell uh, neoplasm arising in the uh, uh, kidney. Uh, grossly, uh, as be expected, these tend to be uh, fairly uh, solid cystic type of tumors here as an example. Uh, they don't have the same penchant for surface involvement as do serous tumors, uh, but certainly if there's a pre-op or intraoperative rupture, uh, peritoneal spread is a uh, possible concern. So for today, our final sign-out diagnosis is clear cell carcin of the ovary with metastasis to the GI tract, as well as to the fallopian tubes. And uh, this uh, clear cell carcinoma uh, tends to behave, have a behavior uh, somewhat intermediate between uh, endometrioid and uh, serous carcinomas. Uh, so it's an important differentiation to make. Uh, since there are clinical trials and uh, 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 treatment options that are somewhat specific for clear cell carcinoma, it's an important diagnosis to make uh, in getting optimal treatment for your patient. Thank you once again for joining me. Uh, the sun is still shining in the Mediterranean, uh, I believe, someplace in the Mediterranean. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, spending another uh, uh, few minutes with you uh, on uh, a coming session of this uh, series.